welcome welcome to a studio vlog art vlog studio tour room tour whatever you want to call it this is not really a studio tour because my room this is in my bedroom so i'm not going to show you guys everything because that'd be kind of weird if i showed you guys where i slept i don't know why that's kind of weird to me mtv cribs traumatized me have you ever seen shaq's bed it's like 20 feet wide anyways every time i post a picture on instagram of my room like a piece of my room like a little spire but it's like room tour room tour i get so many messages about it and sometimes in my comments on youtube not really not that much but instagram is where they go crazy so this is long overdue a lot of people have been asking for this i'm going to give you guys a little glimpse of my creative area i didn't clean my room before i wanted you to see it exactly how i come in here or how I roll out of my bed every day and just start working. This spot is usually dirty right here. I just packed orders yesterday, so whenever I pack orders, I clean up right after, so it's not that bad. But yeah, everything's like in an organized mess situation. But I also have a Q&A for you guys. A lot of people on Instagram ask me some questions. I wanna answer them here, so I'll show you guys something in my room, and then we're gonna change the segment to me like doodling and answering a question, and then I'll switch back to me showing you guys some more stuff in my room. I don't have too much. My bedroom's an okay size, but my, I'm gonna show you guys my little cubicle area it's like a little square basically a cubicle and then we'll chat about it in the comments let me guys know what you think about everything in my room so i appreciate you guys being here thank you for watching thank you for wanting to watch this if you did and if you watched all the way through please drop a like sub comment all that stuff it helps with the algorithm and you guys know that already but it's cool to see some stuff that you create and put it on youtube and people actually engage with it and it gets a little bit of traction it's a little bit motivating a lot of bit motivating actually and it makes me want to keep going you know so happy monday thank you for being here i hope you guys enjoy my room tour uh it's not that cool i have some cool stuff i think but it, but room tour it's just a room tour i don't really have it a cool studio one day i'll have a cool studio and then i'll do another tour but right now it's just my bedroom and all my cool toys so hope you guys enjoy all right see you guys later i'm talking too much okay bye okay coming into the first section in my room when you walk in i have my dbz shelf visine my eyes have been hurting a lot lately i think because i've been doing a lot of overnight drawings anyways my dbz section i have a lot of my manga here some of them i've been collecting for a long time like then i just grabbed number one issues of other manga that i like basically for the art i get i collect manga for the art dragon ball z i read it when i was younger watched it so many times i basically know the story over and over again but uh, i like looking at it for the art the art's perfect but i collect a lot of figures and my thing with figures is you guys probably seen me do this before i take pictures of my action figures and i use them as pose reference for some of my drawings not all of them but a bunch of them that's like my that's like my main reason for collecting action figures but i just love dragon ball z i've been collecting these since 2012 i think i got my first one which was a goku that i actually sold and i feel sad about it when i think about it sometimes but frieza wherever frieza's at he's in the very back you can't really see him he's my second ever sh figure and i got him in like 2013 maybe and he's my oldest one i have but anyways i clicked this scott pilgrim one piece number one jacko and this is my manga section let me show you guys here is the video game section movie section i have way more movies in this but this is like my most recent collection that i got probably my two favorite movies ever if you guys wanted to know two favorite movies ever all right just oh actually those are my two favorite but also top three comedies ever probably i love this movie so much Anyways, my gaming section, uh, I have way more games in this, way more movies in this, but they're all put away different areas of my storage. But uh, Dragon Ball Z Collection, my oldest box set, I believe my dad bought this like 10 years ago, maybe when it came out. I think it was 10 years ago. It's pretty old. I never owned these when I was a kid. I always wanted them. I had a friend who had the whole orange box set. And I was so jealous because I was like, bro, you don't even know, know anything about Dragon Ball Z. You give it to me. And I was just like rude. But anyways, all my Dragon Ball Z movies are right here. Uh, my Adventure Time box set. I love this so much. I love Adventure Time. Adventure Time is my favorite cartoon, like, ever. I could watch Adventure Time over and over and over again. And every time I watch Adventure Time, I feel like I've there's episodes I've never seen before. Even though I watched it all the way through. Steven Universe box set. I love games, controllers, and all that. Look at this right here. Spider-Man 2 on the PS2. Crazy, right? That's uh, my little brother gave me that. Uh, let's. Oh yeah, also this Nuka Cola. It's Nuka. This expired Nuka Cola that I got when Fallout 4 came out. How many years ago was that? That was at least like six, seven years ago, right? I don't know. It's old though, but I love it. it took me forever to find it. All right, next section. All right, I'm on my hands and knees now because this is the bottom section. This is my 
Funko Pop section, which I used to have tons of Funko Pops. I sold so many Funko Pops, and now I only collect Dragon Ball Z, but um, actually, I'm not collecting anymore. I'm selling all these eventually, too, but I have this Toys R Us exclusive hit right here. I don't even know how much that's worth. Toys R Us is out of business, and I have a Toys R Us exclusive hit. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? Anyways, and then also my, um, my Dragon Ball Z Reese's Puff collection. Can you see that? I have every single character except for the $40 box. And then my Piccolo box, I opened it and I ate it. I feel bad about that. I really uh, regret eating that. But I have every character. Some I have doubles of. Before we switch sections, here's my little Samurai Champloo Mugen Sword. And my Donatello mass uh, from the premiere of uh turtles all right let's go next section q a section so i asked some questions on instagram and i got a lot of questions i'm gonna try to answer them all i'm answering them in order there's like 20 plus here maybe 30 questions but uh some of them are the same so let's start off with advice you would give to any new artist that wants to make reels slash videos to show their art my advice would be what's your goal do you want to gain followers or you just want to show your art so i would just say record your art make sure you have good lighting use cap cut that's what I use you don't have to use cap cut but i feel like it's the easiest make your clips eight seconds 0.8 seconds long not a whole second so that's if you want to pop off but if you just want to make art content just to put your stuff out there do whatever you want like sometimes i'll upload a video with where i'm not talking where it's just trending audio clip is like 10 seconds long and then i'll upload another version the same exact video where i'm talking and the video is longer just because i want to do ones that i want to do and ones that i want to gain followers because i want to gain followers i said this before i need eyes on my content so i could be a millionaire and i could buy like a giraffe or something and put it in my backyard i'm just kidding i just want to make cartoons and uh I need eyeballs on my stuff so i could get my characters known and then I can make cartoons anyways my next favorite section in my room is my spider-man section which i had way more spider-man action figures i sold so many of those too because i used to click every single marvel legend that would come out and then they get they started just coming out way too fast too many and i was just like you know what i'm just gonna click spider-man spider-man's cool he's my favorite superhero uh let's just let's just go with the spider-man so now i only have spider-man characters i had all the spider-man villains also but there's so many spider-man villains so i was like you know what let me just trim it down to just venom and carnage so now i only have venom and carnage i still have a lot of the spider-man villains but they're put away i plan on selling those i'm actually considering selling all of these Marvel Legends and only getting the high-end SH Figure Arts, Mafex, and Sentinel brands because those ones are just like way better articulation. And I'm pretty sure this one goes for like 50, 60 bucks now, which I, I'm not paying 50 or 60 bucks for that. I pay like 20 bucks for it. But yeah, but this is my favorite section where I have all my Marvel Legends and then I have my imports like the SH Figure Arts and Mafex on top along with my coke cans that i can't believe i bought so many coke cans but um let's see what i have below all right this is probably my favorite section in my whole room because i love art books i collect art books i love to look at art books but i mainly collect them because i want to have them all i look at like these two i haven't opened yet oh onward entangled i will one day my favorite out of all these has to be the amazing spider-man one book then the mitchells versus machines then the ninja turtles i love those so much but all my art books i love them all equally just those two top tier love them are those three and i have some like instagram artists like people i follow on instagram i have their art books here like i love vitzo i have a love vitzo art book from like 2017 look at this 2015 I bought this from Levitzo in 2016. Good art book, man. Good art book. I plan on making one of these someday as well. Soon. Soon. Soon, I promise. But anyways, I became a Lego addict this year. Um, I have always loved Legos. Growing up, I never had Legos. All my friends had Legos. I would go to their house and I would play with their Legos. And even when I got older, like seventh grade, I remember playing with Legos in my friend's house. And he's like making fun of me because I was playing with his Legos. I was like, bro, you have all these Legos. You don't play with them? Let me play with them. So I'll play with them. Uh, I love Legos. I love Legos. I love building Legos. I love Lego minifigures. I have a bunch here that I collected last year from the Halloween series, the Marvel What If series. And then I have some of the new Marvel stuff. And there's Keaton Batman. Oh, man, I love that Keaton Batman. Oh, man. But uh, yeah, I also use these as character design reference. You guys know that. I made a video about it. But whenever you can't draw, there's a little secret grab this little boat guy if you have a lego and just draw this guy in like a cartoony style or something or take parts from him or something build stuff off of these characters and draw them easy character design hack i guess you could say but uh yeah next section next section okay here are my art books that are more for like studying and learning and all that i have a couple art books in here that are that are just straight art books like the dragon ball z one the big t's one oh that one the bruce tim one's good but it's like but it's a good way to learn how to draw like women i guess and his style because you know he has a 
super stylized anatomy. Anyways, this is my learning section, I would say. I have like the Dynamic Bible by Peter Hahn, Animation, The Animator's Guide, Steven Silver's book I love, and then I have Jamie Hewlett, Gorillas, you guys know that one. And this is just all of my learning stuff that I need to go over and over again. Like, I think the book I'm reading right now is How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, which I read like five years ago when I got back into drawing. Maybe longer, longer than five, probably eight years ago I got back into drawing now. 2018, I read that book because I wanted to become an artist, a comic book artist. That was my first goal, become a comic book artist. Read that book, lost that book, got that book again, so now I'm reading it again, and I want to actually take notes on this time and then review it for you guys, so hopefully you guys are here for that. Next section. This is what I use for reference for my comic books. Like, I'll read these. I read some of these multiple times to try to understand how do people create stories because that's, like, a hard thing for me. Like, I, I, I have stories in my head that I want to include in my 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 own books but it's like once i get them they feel like they take too long but uh, yeah i use all these for reference my favorite one right now is do power bomb i read this twice i love this do a power i would love to see this as like a cartoon or like a, a movie it would be crazy and this is my Biko i won on a twitter giveaway that brooks eggleston did which i'm super glad that he he chose me he chose a couple people but i was like man i, I love this uh, she and i love this character design it's just sick i never win anything happy i won that uh anyways do a power bomb. I highly recommend that. And character design ideas I'm taking from Ultra Mega, like the art style. This is an art style I'm trying to achieve. Kind of like a Mike Mignola, a little bit inspiration, a little bit of the sketchy vibe. You know, it's like super sketchy, super painty. I love that. Look at that. Wow. Gross. That's another. That's a book I'm trying to get inspired by. But then look at the difference. And then this book. Look at the, the art style. I'm trying to morph these two art styles together. Like I want a cartoon style, but I want it to be painted and sketchy like the other one. Uh, I'm trying to achieve it. If you look at my art, I'm kind of getting there, I think. And then I have my coloring book I made in 2022 and 2020, which I think this one is super popular on Amazon. I was doing a lot of rap, hip hop art back then, and uh, a lot of people asked me for coloring pages, which was weird. I never heard of before. So I did it and now we have it. And then I use this book for shoe reference and I use these books for kids, children's book reference, which I love these ones. The style is like perfect. And then this book right here, my ultimate Spider-Man guide or whatever. I got this when I was in fifth grade and I still have it. Can't believe I have it. This is how I learned when I was in this grade. This is how I learned so much about Spider-Man and his villains. It's pretty cool. And then here's my couple of vinyl records I have. This is a, a J. Cole album. I never opened it because he was supposed to, I did his little pre-order thing where he was supposed to autograph it. it. Took like two years to receive this. They said it got lost in transit and they just sent me a replacement but it was like a different cover which is i guess it's fine i would prefer the, the signature version and then here's my stan lee comic book that he actually signed cool huh i met him he's a cool guy the last little section is my comic book collection i have way more comic books than this but these are my favorite ones i keep inside because i like to use them as reference like i do my manga like look at this spider-man humberto ramos my favorite artist my favorite comic artist also cheeks galloway oh man i love cheeks bro i'm a <laughs> hopefully i well, I met him a couple times, but I want to meet him again and have him sign this, but I have that and then I have this. Damn, Michael B. Jordan. Damn, Michael B. Jordan. Sexiest Man Alive 2020. Sheesh. One day I'll be on that cover. Maybe. Hopefully. Soon, maybe. I don't know. What are your artist goals and what are you doing to get those goals? Love the videos. Yeah, thank you, man. The Rojo. So my main, my main art goals right now is to make a comic book or an art book first. And then while I'm doing that, I want to still be applying at like Marvel and Disney and Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. And hopefully get a job in animation. That's my like the biggest goal I have is getting a job in animation. But the sub goals is just create my own stuff, create my own comics, eventually create my own cartoon. I just want to have my characters to be well known. Like like my, my cartoon ideas are like Boondocks and Futurama smashed together with like Craig of the Creek. That's like my ideas. A lot of my ideas are based around like my childhood adventures. I swear when I was, I was a 90s kid and growing up adventures every day. I have so many adventure stories. It's like, man, we would walk to the mall every single day. And the mall was like a two hour walk from my house. And we would go every single day. I don't know why we would just play. And I have like scars and stuff like that from the mall playing tag and stuff in there. And oh my God, this one time we found a, a box city. It was just, I didn't even want to get into it because I have a story. I'm, I'm making for that, uh, that memory I have. 
but uh, yeah those are my goals i have a lot of, i have a million goals but the main ones are working animation creating my own comics creating my own books and the thing that i'm doing the main thing i'm doing right now to get to those is like i'm doing character design like every day i'm applying to these jobs i'm asking for critique i'm trying to implement critique and i'm trying to world build right now if you notice i'll post character designs on my story or on my profile and usually all the characters i post have a backstory so or like a world that they're in and i'll just i'll put like a little snippet of that in there but uh yeah that's mainly what i'm doing right now i believe now the nitty gritty this is my section this is my work area this is where i spent a lot of my time not all of it because most of my time is spent behind me at my other desk but this desk i'm here a lot section dirty gross looking organization i don't care i like it kind of it's ugly but i hate this stupid shelf thingy i got from ikea i hate it never opens but here's where i keep my envelopes my stamps um my thank you cards for etsy's just some like random envelope stuff and then it's so hard to get back in but here's my mun bin printer i highly recommend that mun bin uh, i have a link in my description with my shop of all the stuff that i have my amazon shop is down below where i have all my stuff that i use well most of it i'm still updating it but then i have my sticker paper and then my uh laminate i saw everybody uses this avery laminate i'm giving it a try but um so far i'm liking it but uh, i'll give you guys a review of that later when i do my how to make stickers video i'm um, have some vinyl some more vinyl sticker paper in here and laminate that's all that is that whole section is vinyl sticker paper and laminate and then i hate these drawers because they don't close all the way and then here i have just my address sheet some random stickers seals then i just have my random drawer with with double-sided tape or whatever it's called and then this has like stickers and cards and procreate badge or procreate pin just like random stuff this is all random like you don't even even know about this it's garbage okay don't worry about it uh and then down here i have my plastic bags that i keep my stickers in and then just more random garbage that i really need to just get rid of it's just it's just random garbage okay my ohuhu markers you guys know about those i love ohuhu they're so cool. I always reach out to them when I have something planned and I'll say, hey, I'm doing this. You just want to work with me on this? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. They're hella cool. I love them. Anyways, here's all my Prisma colors. I haven't used these in like three years. Okay. I bought, I try to collect all the colors and now I can't find them in stores. So I stopped. Also, these ones, the Windsor and Newton ones, I don't even see these in stores anymore either. And I try to collect all those and I don't have them. These are all my Prisma colors. What's this one? Windsor Newton brush marker for $1.24 I bought that for. Damn, I forgot I even had that. But there's that. There's all my pens that I use. My refill, my refillable brush pen stuff. Um, this is just my junk drawer with my Apple Pencil nibs. Some SD cards. Garbage. All garbage. Flash drives. So. Uh, my Poscas. Don't really use those no more because I have Arctix. And then these are my Copics, which I don't use at all because they're expensive and they all need to be refilled and refills are expensive. But this is my favorite Copic right here. I love this color. What color is this? Hydrangea blue. I love that. But that's my little uh, art supply section, which I really want to redo. I want this to be like a wood, a wooden uh, shelving system. But I have that and then I move these over. This is where I usually keep my stickers, but now I have too many stickers, so I can't fit them all here. So I've been taking them out, but uh, here's some of my... This is my Patreon sticker this month, Snorlax. And this one's also a Patreon sticker this month. I'm gonna I'm doing like a little random thing where I, I'm gonna put these all in random envelopes and then name them after, and then you get... You either get a Snorlax or you get a Finn. You go ahead and decide. If you guys want to join my Patreon, that'd be sick. You guys get a random sticker every month. I mean, it's not random every month, but my ninja turtle action figures uh my son broke i'm pretty sad about that but i'm um, a stapler and then all my pens that i use for my these are my drawing pens and pencils and then this is like my random like tools and stuff like that and then my little drawing boards and then this person asked the same day twice we ever make an art book i just was talking about this yes i am actually talking to a company right now about creating one so hopefully within the next year hopefully sooner we have an art book i want to make an art book with exclusive art that i don't post anywhere with like sketches and like behind the scenes and like maybe like a picture of me eating like ramen or something like that but that's coming soon i don't know if you guys are trying to like see me in the video at the same time but i'm just like showing you guys everything this is my artix marker section which next week 
next week's video they i want to do a full review like i did a little draw with me video but i want to do a full review on these and say what i like i don't like what i think they should change i want to try to keep it under five minutes i don't want it to be too long but i have their pencils i have their pastels i have four boxes of different markers but i feel like this one and these are the same these ones are more like the poscas they have like a harder nib um i'm gonna do those but i've been loving using those lately because i've been doing a lot of traditional art and this is like my most recent traditional piece i've done with the Artix markers and I just man I, this could be a print I think this is like I kind of went crazy I, I don't want to I usually don't like my art because you know you draw and you're like oh, I could do better next time but this one I was like going in I was like I'm just gonna do a quick little drawing post it on Instagram and I finished it and I was like yeah this is this is one this is the one but behind the Artix markers I have more Ohuhu pastel set and then there's just my little Ninja Turtle corner from the movie and then this is where I keep all my stickers in now not that little case I keep it in this big case which I it's kind of inconvenient on my desk I need a better setup I, got, like, I think I need to line my walls with like drawers to keep them in or something. But this is cool for conventions, but to have it on my desk, it's not convenient. That's where that sits when I'm not at conventions. And then underneath it, I have my watercolor paper and my Bristol board paper. I'm using watercolor paper with the Ohuhu markers and I regret it. They bleed so much in the watercolor paper and it just like absorbs it. And I wish I would have used the Bristol board instead. It probably would have worked way better, but I like the thickness of the watercolor paper i feel like it's more high quality but that's that so i just want to give you guys a little bit of a wide shot you see this shot all the time in the back of my videos i have my right that or this is my drawing i use my artix markers on that it took me like 10 hours and i hate it but i hung it up because i'm gonna give it away uh my action figures that i didn't open which i might sell those and then i have my turning red print that i got from the disney insiders club thingy or whatever and then some more turning red prints that i got from disneyland and then i have my trunk skateboard i have the last picture that me and my brother ever took together and then i have my dragon ball z action figures that i do not like because there's dragon stars i don't like dragon stars action figures but um they look cool in the box so that's where they're gonna stay in the box but panning off to the right i have the ninja turtles pizza box hanging on my wall because i ordered pizza from them and i saw the box and i was like i have to get i don't even like pizza hut but i love the fact that it came in this pizza box and i was just like bro this is the mar greatest marketing ever i wish i could have got more because i think those different boxes but i want more i want to frame that but that's sick and there's some more dragon ball z posters and stuff like that my little poster section i hope you guys are not getting bored yet because i'm just gonna speed run this section this is my star wars section boom star wars this star wars that lightsabers uh gum wise gum up here uh, i got this from disneyland you guys already know about disneyland um i'm saving this forever probably it's a funko pop i made of my little brother i made him into a funko pop and i put his own little funko pop sticker on there his lightsaber is pretty cool uh here's my little lego thing i got from making like a 300 dollars purchase on lego more dragon ball z cereal all my legos my favorite marvel legend which is the saint chase variant 10th anniversary miles morales suit the best suit spider-man has probably ever worn that's just my opinion i know a lot of people don't like that but i love that i love that suit Get some hate, get some love. It's cool. I love it. And then a uh, Lego camera. A lot of knocked over figures. My oldest Funko Pop. I got this when the movie came out. 2013, I want to say. I got this in like 2012. Look at the design. It even looks different. It's weird. Uh, all my Legos. I love Legos. My Gundams. My Gumpla. And then there's that. You'll see some B-roll. And then right underneath my Legos, I have my stupid Cricut. I hate this thing, but I love this thing because it lets me make stickers, but sometimes I don't. When it does, I love it. But uh, let's, 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 let's talk about what's underneath it because what's underneath it is I hate it with a passion. All right, before we get into why I hate this, here's my lightsabers. Here's my hat that I always wear keyboard uh just random stuff but i hate this printer so much ever since i got it it was like 500 dollars. i got it i paid 500 dollars for it i got it on bh photography or bh photo i guess and they sent me a 200 dollars gift card after that so it's like a rebate so technically i only paid like what like 300 for it hate it ever since i got it it's been nothing but problems you can only print on certain kinds of paper every time i print on matte paper it just doesn't want to work if you guys have this canon pro 100 destroy it get it, get it out of your life I'm looking to get the Epson the Eco Tank. Everybody's recommending that to me, and I want to get it now. A lot of my favorite artists that I watch their vlogs and stuff like that, they uh, they use that, and I want to use that. And I hate this. I've had this for since 2017, something like that. 2018, I hate it. 
it's so big and heavy i hate it i hate it i can't i can't explain how much how much i hate this stupid printer get it out of my life Look at those cool stickers, though. And we have Noisy. What kind of art do you enjoy more? Digital or traditional? Right now, traditional. Digital, I remember the first time I tried doing digital, I just fell in love because it was just so new to me. And I'm just like, damn, people have been doing this for years and I'm barely hopping on it and I love it so much. As I said, I used to do like a lot of traditional and I would just sit there with color pencils forever, filling in stuff. And then I, could, and then I go to digital and I just use a paint bucket. I just love digital. But uh, traditional right now, at this moment, and traditional is my thing. I love it the most. It's so fresh and new because I haven't done it in so long, but everything is like traditional right now. But digital forever, I guess. Okay, last section underneath my crafting table. I have all my Lego sets I haven't built yet, all my sketchbooks, all my paper, all my photos I've taken over the years, and some more action figures put away in boxes, and some more Legos that are minifigures. Oh, my Nintendo Switch is there too. Uh, this is like a mess. It wasn't like this a couple weeks ago, but I've just been like throwing stuff down here, so it's kind of horrible. But this is where I keep like my iPad chargers back here. That's there. I have a bunch of these like knives and stuff like that that were my little brothers and he just moved so I'm taking those from him. Uh, there's like Wolverine claws back there too. Uh, all my sketchbooks that I finished and then in my drawers, this is full of wires and then this is full of uh, electronic stuff that I use and in the top drawer is more pens and pencils. More Prisma colors too. But I hate this drawer too, it was free. I took it, it was free. So they, they gave it to me so I accepted it. But um. Let's check out my the final section of my dad. I hope you guys are not bored yet. I know this might be boring the way I'm showing you guys everything in my room. I know you guys wanted to so, there's a lot of you guys who wanted to see this and I'm showing you guys uh so if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. Alright. Tips you can give someone for a character design or what your first step is in when you create here. Okay, mine. Okay, I took Steven Silver's class. I took a bunch of classes actually. Everything's depending on cartoon and if you want to go cartoon, if you want to go realistic. But everything comes down to silhouette. You have to have a good silhouette for your characters. So I learned, I made a character and he was just like a straight rectangle. And then Steven Silver drew over, made him like more of an upper rectangle into a square. I don't know how to explain it, but try to get your characters in shapes. Like I have my character Sky you've seen before I, I made his head based on a bowl with a pineapple in it and his hair is like the pineapple and his chin is like the bowl it's like a whole thing but um yeah if you have good shapes good silhouette then um that's like the best thing to start out with i would say and then also inspiration i have like i said it earlier legos i grab a lego and i'll draw that lego in like a more cartoon accurate proportions and just take that whole character design or right up on pinterest and just grab a bunch of characters and take pieces from each one and design a character but i always go in there with like a mindset of what i want it to be for like don't want it to be cartoony like my cartoon style or don't want it to be in like my comic book style because i found out i have two different styles one's more clean lines more clean shapes and, but it's like super cartoony and the other one is my combo style where I just, it's like scratchy I had a lot of texture and that's what I'm just sticking with I'm sticking with two styles for now on uh, I was trying so hard to find one but I found two so hopefully you guys notice that I don't know if you guys have noticed that if you guys look at my recent Instagram posts you might have noticed that but anyways I hope that answers your character creation uh question okay 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 last section last little spot this is the main spot that I'm always at my desk always looks like this i always have a, a jug of water i always have two gloves because i'm always losing one i'm always i always have my glasses because i need glasses to draw now for some reason i'm getting old i guess i have my little notebook where i write all my youtube uh scripts out before i before i upload uh before i upload i write down like scripts and stuff like that and um so i know what i'm gonna say this video i don't know what i'm gonna say because i'm just yapping and i'm showing you guys my stuff so none of this is Scripted. but I have two gaming monitors ones this is like 120 refresh rate this one's only 60 I think barely maybe it's not even 60 I got this I got this monitor like eight years ago I got this one like three years ago I need to upgrade this one because I get the sizes and then I have a Wacom Cintiq um Pro HD I don't even remember but this thing was so expensive I don't want to talk about it I when I got it I kind of regretted it but I did like 500 commissions in like a month to buy this and it's crazy that I was able to do that in a month and people actually helped me i made like a tiktok i was like oh, i'm trying to buy my one of my tablets broke i think my ipad broke can i buy a new cintiq or something like that it's like a goal if you guys want to help me i don't want to i'm not asking you for money 
I don't want your money for free. I want to draw you. So I was like drawing people and I raised enough money to buy that. That's how many, that's how much drawings I did in like a month. Anyways, that. Then I have my speakers here, which I love. They're Bluetooth. Um, I use them all the time. I forgot the names of them. If I find it, I'll put them in the link. I love these speakers. There's like one or two wires you need to hook it up to your computer. And they have this glorious keypad wireless, which is dope. I use this for when I use like Clip Studio and stuff like that. Uh, and then I have this Ann Pro 2 wireless keyboard no wires i hate wires and i have this uh, logitech g pro um light speed i think i want to say super light like 100 bucks 80 bucks something like that wireless also didn't have my custom tori bot that i got a few years ago and then naruto and then there's my wire management i hate my wire management don't look at my wire management please and then besides that here's my little crafting drawer that has like all my paints and stuff and my gouaches and this is where i just like dig in here and just start drawing crazy go crazy uh, uh, bottom drawer is just very good stuff I never use, ever, never ever use it. Hey, last thing before the outro or the final video, I have this little makeshift drawer I taped up here. It's like a drawer, desk drawer. Well, my computer, I built this computer in 2014 and it's it's been dying. I had to reformat it a couple times, but it's, it's, I can barely open Photoshop. I can only have like 10 layers on Photoshop before it just like shuts down. I can't have canvases bigger than like 2000 by 2000 and it's still going. I can't edit videos on it no more. I can't stream on it no more. It's falling apart. Uh, I could barely use Clip Studio on it and that's what I've been doing. And I think it's time for an upgrade, but uh, hopefully I become a millionaire this year and I can buy a PC finally. I've been trying to build a PC for like five years now. Anyways, there's my PC. It's old. It used to be black. I painted it white to fit in with the desk. It's ugly. I know. Don't tell me. Has a as a GTX 970 and I have an i7 processor that I bought in like 2014 so guess guess the specs on this thing horrible trash garbage don't recommend anyways let's uh, get into the last Q&A question I guess and then we have who's your favorite artist I say this all the time Umberto Ramos Umberto Ramos is my biggest inspiration to get into comics but my biggest inspiration to get into drawing was Toriyama like a lot of people so I would have to say Toriyama is probably my favorite artist. I have the most of his art, I think. But I have tons of favorite artists and inspiration. Like I can't even I can't even count them honestly. Like I, I know like Humberto Ramos, Toriyama, Kim Jong Ji, Lavizzo, Koteri Art, Andrew Cockroach. There's just so many. I can't even like I look at so many people. Panel per day is like one of my new favorites. And then T Kitch is like top top ten for sure. Action Hank Beard. Like all of them are so dope. Saint Chase, I can't even forget Saint Chase, bro. Saint Chase top five, but I can't, I can't name one. If it was one, one, it'd be Toriyama. What's yours? Tell me yours in the comments below. Who's your favorite artist? Don't say me, please. I'm, I'll blush. How does one get into sketching art pieces like yours? Love your art. Me? When I sketch, I just doodle. I don't even care. I just start scratching. Usually I'll have an idea like a. Okay, I'm just gonna draw Spider Man. Like a bunch of different spider-man heads or a bunch of batman heads or a bunch of wolverine heads and then i use the car sketchbook for actually just sketching crazy and then my indoor sketchbook i guess you could say i use that one for uh, more cleaner sketches but it's still a sketchbook so i don't care about what the final piece looks like i basically go in there with a pen usually i never use a pencil whenever i'm trying to do like paint overs with like the markers but a pen that way everything's just like final you just go crazy and i just start scratching away i don't know i don't know how to explain how to get into that mode if you're like an art block or something like that i would just say grab a toy or a book and try to copy that character do it like five times and then implement your own version i took an ethan becker class and he showed us how to break down an art style and he said redraw it again and then try to redraw it from memory and then look at the difference and then try to redraw your own version so i would say try that in your sketchbook i think that would be pretty cool my favorite fruit what's your favorite fruit my favorite fruit is right now it's watermelon i've been going crazy dog in like a whole watermelon a day i love pineapple and mango too but watermelon's just taking over my life these past couple weeks i can't stop eating it what's your favorite fruit tell me uh who's your idol um this one's hard 
because an idol is like somebody you want to be like, right? The only person I can think of is like creatively is like Toriyama. He was just so sick. He changed the world and he motivated so many people. That's probably like the only person I can think of that's like off the top of my dome. Besides like Stanley, like I just want to create stuff, man. And they love to just create. I think Toriyama loves to create. Sometimes when you read his interviews, it doesn't sound like it. It's not like he was overworked. But when he created his own stuff where he wasn't having like deadlines, I feel like he really enjoyed it. And I like that. So Toriyama, Toriyama Sensei is probably like my biggest idol next to like Stan Lee or like Samuel L. Jackson or something. What are some tips you have for learning anatomy? I would say grab some books, Morpho, but also do some breakdowns like where you trace over a character, you just trace over the shapes of a, um, a pose. Like say you have a character doing a pose, you just trace the shapes and then you redraw it and then you study your mistakes. That would be my best bet on how to get better at anatomy. But I suck at anatomy. I know all these things on how to get better at anatomy, but I never implement them into my own art because I'm always just drawing the same stuff over and over again. Like right now I'm drawing myself with just dot eyes and uh, that's all I do. One day I'll be better at anatomy though. That's why I say though, Morpho books, the book that's by Taco, he's like breaks on anatomy. I would say study those and then also break down real life. Draw from real life actually. How do you plan your Instagram page to fit all together? I get this one so much. Basically all it is is I just draw a bunch. Like if you notice I don't post that much on my Instagram my main timeline and that's because i'm always thinking about the end result and what i'll do is once i have all my drawings done i'll go into photoshop and i'll just put them all on one big canvas if that makes any sense i would have to do a tutorial on how to do it but you just put them all in one big canvas and i just cut the canvas export it in like sections and just upload it in sections if that makes sense. Does that make any sense? I would have to do a, a full on tutorial, but I get this question all the time and I feel like it would be a good uh, tutorial for everybody to learn how to do it. But yeah, as an artist, what is the best place for commissions? I would have to say I've gotten the most commissions. I got the most commissions through Fiverr. Fiverr's weird now. I don't get any commissions through Fiverr anymore. It's always spam. People trying to like use my account for their selves. Basically, like they'll reach out and be like from China or India or something like that. And I'll be like, can you sell these products for me? And I'll give you a cut. And I'm just like, I'm sick of seeing this. But yeah, I would say besides that, coffee. He's coffee. Do you prefer digital or traditional? I think I we already answered this, but traditional. What is your favorite thing to draw right now? My the thing I always draw is myself, like doing stuff just because it's like I could cartoonify myself super easily, I think. I feel like. And uh, I don't have to worry about likeness because it's like if I don't look like me, I don't care. My favorite thing to draw is me and Spider-Man. I always draw Spider-Man. I love drawing Spider-Man. But those two things, that's what I'm drawing right now. I'm drawing my, you can see because the light is too bright, but I'm drawing myself. Dude, how can I draw like you? I have tons of YouTube tutorials. I don't want, I don't think you could draw exactly like me unless you like literally just trace my work and then just learn my art style. But my art style is always changing. So I don't know if you'd be able to draw exactly like me, but look at my tutorials. I show you how I color, how I do my line art. How I do everything basically, how I just, how I figure out my designs. It's all there. Just you just have to look look at my YouTube man. Everything's there. And if you have any specific questions, just ask me in the DMs. I'm trying to learn how to draw, but it's not clicking. Do you have any tips? Yes. Copy. Copy everything. Copy. Just copy everything. Watch your favorite cartoons, copy it. Look at your favorite artists, copy them. But if you do copy them, don't post them to your social media and claim that it's your art, alright? Just if you're just using it to study. Go ahead and um, I use this artist as reference. Uh, here's my study, and then maybe they'll like it, and then they'll share it. Maybe uh, I don't know. It depends on the artist. A lot of some artists are stuck up. Uh, a lot of artists are stuck up, actually. I hope I don't come off as stuck up because I I'd be watching some artists and they just seem stuck up. Like I don't know. Is it just me that like thinks that way? Like don't meet your heroes type thing but then you watch like these youtube artists and they just seem stuck up i don't know it could just be me anyways yeah just copy everything that's what i that's how i started dragon ball z copying everything uh next we have what's your favorite songs while drawing all right my favorite songs man i have so many like i always listen to like a bunch of playlists but right now my favorite thing to listen to besides podcasts is this playlist on youtube it's like 90s r&b soul chill playlist or something like that i'll try to link it oh my god man i slap that and i just it just puts me in like a mode where i just want to create it's so so it's like a bunch of like hype r&b songs but then it, but then it calms down gets a little bit chill and then it chills out and then it picks back up and gets super hype again and it just, it just gives me like so motivated to draw hair and all these like 
all these like hearing all these '90s slappers when I was like a kid just makes me like daddy slap. In the '90s, man, the '90s made slaps, man. Anyways, that's my favorite thing right now is that playlist. My favorite playlist right now, that and then maybe some like Drake, um, some Drake and Drake at night or Drake and drive. Don't Drake and drive playlist where there's a bunch of sad songs in the rain. You shouldn't listen to Drake and Drive, it's a little funny. They worry about legalities of fan art all the time. I actually got hit with a bunch of legalities for doing like fan art of rappers. Like they sent me letters like cease and desist and stuff like that for drawing them, which sucks because you like these rap artists and then they're gonna try to like be, sue you for drawing them. Like I, I, I drew this rapper, pretty big rapper I would say. I put a sticker, a lot of people asked me to do this, like, they're like, oh, you should make it into a sticker. I was like, okay, cool. So I made it on Redbubble, sold one sticker for like 25 cents. And then I got an email from their lawyer saying that to take the art down and that they're sending me like a, to court and stuff like that. And a bunch of, they had like a list of artists on their little court thing. A bunch of artists were on it that I knew and I was like, damn. So I was like reaching out to all these artists, like, you guys hear about this? And a lot of them didn't even know that they were getting sued. So I don't know what happened with that. But ever since that, that scares me. And that's why I don't draw rappers that much anymore. There's only a couple rappers I draw that I'm like, really, they really seem like cool people. Uh, it could just been the dude's lawyer. If I got a new lawyer and they probably like, went on a mission but uh that's cold it's i hate that it makes me unmoved. i never drew that rapper again i used to draw him all the time now i don't draw him no more yeah that sucks legalities and then some stuff happened with uh any updates on the nick artist program i'm actually almost done with my portfolio they say don't wait till the last day but every year this is what i do it's bad though every year i know it happens july 1st but every year i wait until july 1st to start because i treat it like a deadline i'm like okay i have exactly one month to create a portfolio to create a resume or to create a cover letter let's go let's go crazy and i always do it i make a whole bunch of new characters a whole bunch of new turnarounds within a month within a week usually and then i upload it so i haven't heard anything because i haven't uploaded yet but my i'm uploading my portfolio probably tonight or tomorrow so if any of you are in the nick artist program or signing up for it. Let me know what you did. Or if you want to share your portfolio with me so I can take a look and I'll share, you, share mine with you. We'd all take a look at each other's and give each other a critique if you want. But we don't have to share a critique. We could just say what we like or we could just look at each other's and use it as inspiration. When did you start drawing? When did you find your style of drawing? Like everybody, I started drawing when I was a little kid. Uh, I started out drawing lowrider cars in lowrider magazines and Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, those are my favorite things to draw all the time when I was little, until I discovered Dragon Ball Z, that's all I ever drew. So from when I was like five is my earliest memory of drawing that stuff, to when I was like, maybe in seventh grade, I stopped drawing. I was still, I was known as an art kid though, until I got to high school, and then I never drew again, until I was like 25, 26 maybe. I think I started drawing again, I picked it up, because I went to an artist alley, and I was like, Man, this looks so fun. Everybody's selling their art and like they're making books and stuff like that. I was like, I want to do that. I would love to, to like share my characters. So that was my biggest goal was do Artist Alley and share my art. And that's when I picked it up again. So I want to say 2018. So what is that? Two, six years ago? Six years ago is when I started drawing again from a child, being a child to now. So I would say I officially started drawing again six years ago after taking what, like 10 years off from drawing because I was a gamer. But I feel like I still haven't found my style. I'm still working on it. But right now I have the two styles I was talking about. And that's just because I take from a bunch of other artists and incorporate into my art. Favorite comic book character versus favorite anime character. My favorite comic book character is Spider-Man. And my favorite anime character has to be Trunks. Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, Trunks. 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 Do you play any games? Oh, games. My weakness. Right now I'm playing Minecraft. You guys know that. I've been in my little monthly, my month long bender for, you know, every year you get into Minecraft. I'm in mines right now. Minecraft. And besides Minecraft, any Dragon Ball Z game. And last question favorite anime? Dragon Ball Z, bro. Dragon Ball Z and then uh, Full Metal Alchemist and then Samurai Champloo for me. That's mine. That's it. And then I just love those animes. They're just like. Dragon Ball Z is just nostalgia, when Full Metal Alchemist is just 100% top tier. Samurai Champloo is just short and sweet, I love it, and the music is perfect. But anyways, that was my last question. Thank you guys for the Q&A, hope you guys like the room tour Q&A. This video is long, I'm pretty sure, I haven't edited it yet. I'm pretty sure it's super long. Let's outro this thing, alright? Thank you for the questions, let's go, outro, outro. Okay, this is my room, this is my... This is my little corner in my room, my little setup. I hope you guys enjoyed. 
hope you guys liked it thank you for all the questions thank you for all the comments if you guys enjoyed this video please drop a like sub all that stuff you guys already know if there's anything you want me to elaborate more on if you have a question leave it in the comments like like why do i put my needed eraser on my pen like this when i store it i don't know i just do it or why do i have an exacto knife next to my toothbrush why do i have a toothbrush in here would you guys like to know why i have a toothbrush here ask me maybe i'll tell you or why do i have a katana where my cricket tools go i don't know maybe if somebody asked me i would tell you or what's my favorite brand of cologne i didn't really get into that but also what's behind my cricket oh it's it's refillable ink for this stupid printer that i want to blow up but yeah if you have any more questions let me know like why do i have a Apple gun underneath my desk. I don't know. That's me. Anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the patrons. They're on the screen right now. I hope. Uh hope you guys like this cool view. Um I'm actually six foot tall. I might look shorter in the video, but thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. Peace out. Bye.